Huh? We're live. Yeah, 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 we're live
So a person who's in a car accident, Ashkenazim say Gomer. <coughs> I remember one time me and my brother, we went on a Shabbaton with a couple of his friends to a place called Swan Lake in uh, upstate, some Ir Hanidafa, somewhere off of. It was amazing, you know. One thing I say by the Hasidim, God bless them. Anywhere you go, there's Hasidim, you should know one thing. There's at least three mikvahs over there. They'll make it, yeah, they'll make it out of wood. They'll make it out of this. You know, you know that there's a mikvah over there. So we were in Swan Lake, and the Sfaradim have a minhag. Anytime you travel for more than 72 minutes on a highway, the fact that you're alive when you come out, it's a miracle. It's a miracle. So if you drive for 72 minutes on the freeway, you have to say Gomel. But the funny thing is, out of all the things, Ashkenazim don't have that minhag. They'll say Gomel on anything. Car accident, sick, anything. But on this they won't say. For us, we will say. So we, me and my brother and his friends, we went up on Shabbat and they called us for Aliyah because we were new faces. We're all saying, and every one of us is saying Gomel. So they're all looking at us, you guys came out of a car accident? <laughs> so they know, we were driving on the freeway. <laughs> so that's why we're saying Gomel. So every Eida has his own minhag. So this person, whose shoes at the end of the day, he was in the car, almost hit him. He hit, did hit him, and he was saved from the car accident. He could, he was Sfaradi, so he didn't say Gomel because car accident don't say Gomel. But he made a Sudat Hodaya. What's a Sudat Hodaya? You make a meal and you publicize the miracle that happened to you. It's a very big thing. Yeah. The Ramban. The Ramban, Nachmanari says, it's a biblical mitzvah to do that. And it's Hasagot and the Rambam. Rambam wrote a book. What are the 613 mitzvot? I want to ask you guys a trivia question. Who here knows what is the only source in the Torah, Torah Shebechtav, Torah Shebaalpeh, that says there are 613 mitzvot? There is one sentence in Masechet Makot. You guys don't even know. You guys all say 613, 613, 613. There is one sentence in the end of Masechet Makot. I think Dav Chav Gimel Chav Bet, something like that. That says there are 613 mitzvot. Many early Rabbanim disagreed. They said there aren't 613 mitzvot. There's more. The Rambam, Maimonides, he wrote a book counting 613 mitzvot one by one. After he did that, everyone got up and started to do that. But he started it. Nachmanides, Ramban, who was nine years old when Maimonides passed away, he wrote a book saying that the Rambam is wrong on the way he counted the 613 mitzvot. He miscounted, no, not even in the order. He miscounted some mitzvot. There is, no, a mitzvot that, for example, the Rambam says that there is, the Rambam says it's not a mitzvah. It's already included in a different one. There's a different mitzvah. Wait a second. One example, the Ramban says, Nachmanides, there is a biblical mitzvah to say thank you to God. There is a biblical mitzvah to say thank you to God. Rambam doesn't count that as a mitzvah. So what do we do? Do we follow the Rambam or the Ramban? Who knows? They both sound good. Elu ve'elu divrei Elohim Chaim. It's like the famous Gemara. Beit Shammai versus Beit Yilel. I think Masechet Beitza. It says over there at the end they had a big fight. Halachot. They started to forget the Torah. They had machloket, the, the, the house, the students, not the actual rabbanim. Until Abatko said, Abatko, the echo came out from Shamaim and said, Elu ve'elu, divrei Elohim chayim. They're both the words of God. So right now, so this person, he's making a sudat mitzvah. When you make a, a Thanksgiving meal, not the Thanksgiving for the Indians. Even though it's... it's you could mistake in the Bukharians for the Indians. Why? Every day you have so many chief rabbis. Every day there's a new chief rabbi. So you might think we're an Indian. Like, well, you know, they have chiefs. You know, they have chieftains. So you think we're the Indians. You know? But we're not. Depends which tribe, yeah. The Cherokees? Well, yeah. They say they have 10 lost tribes. 
So when a person makes a suit, that's mitzvah, you should know you're fulfilling a biblical commandment, at least, at least according to the Ramban. So this person makes a, he, he got saved from a car accident. He can't say Gomel, so he makes a suit, that mitzvah. And every one of the, he invites everyone in the shul. There was a lot of Ashkenazim over there. Ashkenazim, they like eating chalavi. Milchik. Sephardi meat besari. They eat uh, meat. So he brings uh, cream cheese and butter and bagels. So many different kinds of bagels. The next day, so that mitzvah finishes. He says to Hashem, thank you Hashem, you saved me from the car accident. Next day, another Sudat Mitzvah. A friend inside the shul, his friend, makes a Sudat Mitzvah. So they all go to him, everyone, and says, Well, you also were saved from a car accident? He said, No. So why are you making a Sudat Hodaya? Why are you bringing a thank you, Hashem, meal? He says, Because every day I cross that intersection and I take it for granted I'm alive. We don't deserve to take things for granted. Every second is a miracle. Why make the meal? Why make the thanks to God afterwards? I want to make it before. And that's why I'm making a Suda Hodaya. So I heard in the name of the Hasidim Arishonim that in the month of Elul, they had a minahat to make Suda Mitzvahs. Suda Mitzvah. This Seuda was just, just to thank Hashem. Just to thank Hashem. So, in honor of the Hasidim Arishonim, I decided to make a Seuda to uh, Hodaya. Just to thank Hashem that we're alive. You know, yesterday I was praying Musaf. I couldn't make it to a minion. In the middle I was praying Musaf. I gave my daughter, seven months old, a cookie. One of those biscuits, you know, the ones that melt. I said, eat the biscuit while I pray Musaf, you know, I can have a little kavana. In the middle of the Musaf, I hear her crying, crying, crying. It's mamash, two days ago, three days ago. She's crying. I said, why is she crying? In the middle of Musaf, I turn around, in the middle of Musaf. She doesn't stop crying. She, I feel like she's hyperventilating, she can't breathe. Right away, I take my finger inside her mouth. I take out a cookie this big. These things happen to parents every other day. Every time that happens, you should know it's a miracle. It could be a question of 10, 30 seconds. You're driving from upstate to, to a city. You know how many accidents on ways shows over there? How many people, chas v'shalom? And you make it, some people go to drive Long Island, Five Town, they go far away, every, every day is a miracle that you're alive. You go on the train, every day is a miracle. Yeah, Bema. It's a mitzvah, once in a while, to say thank you to Hashem. Halavai, we should say it every day. Halavai, we should say it every day. We're married, you know, there are so many people in the world that aren't married. We should say thank you to Hashem. We have children. Thank you, Hashem. Rabotai, Chodesh Elul Higia. Rabbi Yisrael Salanter used to say that when the month of Elul comes, the fish in the sea, the fish, not even outside, they're in the sea, they start to shake. Why? They don't know. They're going to make it next year or no? I was reading the Rambam today. Sefer Amada. First pages of the Rambam. Anybody has uh, any questions? If there is one God, there's why Avodah Zarah is not real. How come? How do we know that God doesn't have a body? You open up Book of the Rambam, Sefer Amada, first three pages. You come out of there, the biggest study. The biggest study. I was reading Sefer Amada. I like to read it once in a while to strengthen my emuna. And I said to myself, There is nothing in this world but you. Chodesh Elul is coming. 
Chodesh Elul is coming. Did you ever see a person is called to court and the judge himself is sending him a fax, is sending him a text message. You want to get, you want to get this, you want to get a dismiss? Do A, B, Z, D. You ever see such a thing? We just read this week's parasha. The shofet, the judge, the judge. You're not allowed to take a bribe. Not only can't you take a bribe, the Gemara says, Rabbi Ishmael, Rabbi Yosef. He was a Kohen. One time, one person came to give him matnot kiuna. You know what matnot kiuna is? Making a small video on rare mitzvot. There's a rare mitzvah. The Kafachaim says, I think Siman Samech Aleph in your idea, if you do this rare mitzvah on that day, it's almost promised you're going to have a spark of Ruach HaKodesh. I've been bugging my brother because he's a shochet. Let's do this. He doesn't want to do it. Okay, I don't know. If he's listening, I hope he... Welcome. There's a mitzvah when you shecht a, a cow or a sheep. It's a rare mitzvah. Nobody does this. To take the foreleg, the cheek, the cheeks, and the maw, it's a part of the inner organs, and give it as a present to the Kohen. It's called Zeroa Lehayaim Vakeva. It's this week's parasha, Shoftim. Any Kohen. It's a mitzvah from the Torah to go to the Kohen and give him these gifts. <laughs> yeah, we can give you something. So you might ask a question: How come all those uh, places out there, and I don't know, all those factories, they don't do it? They rely on a Rashi, or they rely on a Rashi, or they rely on something called Breda, where they say if you get into a partnership with a goy, if a goy owns some part of the animal, kabuta bi, the goy could say the four legs, the cheeks, and the maw belong to me. So you can't give it, you shouldn't give it to the... So all the meat that you eat, they don't do this. They don't do this. So one time it's flour. Every, no, every time you slaughter an animal, the cheeks, the lechayim, the foreleg, and the keva, the maw, has to go to the kohen. It's called matinot kihuna. Every kohen has to get it. It's a rare mitzvah. And the Kafa Chaim says, the Kafa Chaim opened up Siman Sabakab, I think Siif Katan Nun Gimel. He says, the day that you do this, you're going to get a spark of Ruach HaKodesh. You know why? Because nobody does it these days. Nobody does it. So I, you have to do it. You have to do it. I want to give you another mitzvah of getting off on a little tangent. You ever you ever buy an animal a chick you ever eat chicken? Lots of chickens you eat. Better to, you just ate chicken. Better to eat chicken than meat, right? When you slaughter a chicken, there is a mitzvah from the Torah to cover the blood. Did you know that? Only chickens and wild animals, like a deer. Or a giraffe. You ever eat giraffe? No, it's allowed. There's no, there's, there's no problem to eat giraffe. If you would slaughter, oh, you tried it. Did, did it ah, yeah. <laughs> you started to run. You started to kick really. If you would eat a giraffe, it's kosher, hundred percent. We know where to slaughter it. Those people who say the le- the the neck is too long, we know where to slaughter. It. Nonsense. Total nonsense. The only problem is to slaughter a giraffe. You need like seven uh, bodybuilders to hold that. You know, a, a giraffe, some chokmah chits on it. With one kick, it kills a lion. One kick, it kills a lion. Did you know that? A giraffe, with one kick, it could kill a lion. So, a, a, a giraffe, in Hebrew, we call it a zamer. We just read it last week's parasha, actually. Kosher animals. One of them is a zamer. One of them is the one of the kosher. Is giraffe is hundred percent. How do we know any animal that has horns? 
horns and choose its cud, cud. We know for a fact that it has split hooves. That's actually one of the proofs that the Torah is divine. Because till today we haven't found an animal that has horns and chews its cud that doesn't have split hooves. Mm-hmm. People like to use the fish analogy. Oh, if it does, if it has scales, it has fins. You don't have to go so you know easy. You can use a couple more. If it has horns and it chews its cud, for sure it has hooves, split hooves. Another proof that Torah is divine. A bull has horns, chews its cud, and has split hooves. So it's a mitzvah and chodesh elul. So first of all, I want to let you guys know: any time a person does a rare mitzvah, a rare mitzvah at that moment is a et ratzon min It's a it's a moment in heaven that's not. A, I just want to let you guys know. I want to. Um, let's see. It's nine thirty-six. We have a couple of minutes. 15 minutes before the end of the year, I want to give you guys a couple of sigulot for Chodesh Elul. A couple of sigulot. I want you guys to know one thing. If you go after rare mitzvahs, rare, covering the blood of a chicken or a wild animal, doing, giving the matnot kihuna, giving the foreleg, the cheekbones, the, with the meat and the maw. You do shiluach haken. You send away the mother bird. You do the mitzvah of pidyon ben. How come such a big mitzvah to go to pidyon ben? It's a rare mitzvah. You do the mitzvah of pidyon peter chamor. You buy a donkey and you redeem the firstborn donkey from the kohen. You guys have a lot of gifts, by the way. You should know that. Yeah. By the way, any Kohen that takes a gift can be a Kohen Gadol. It's a kind of like a footnote. <laughs> but he could, yeah. But Kohen Gadol can only be a Kohen Gadol. Parents or Kohen. Both Kohanim. No, any Kohen. If your father is a Kohen, you're a Kohen. And a Kohen Gadol, same thing. But a Kohen Gadol, what's his properties? What characteristic he has to have? He, the Gemara says, never took matnot kiuna. He never took a gift in his life. He never took money from anyone. You know why? Because one day he's going to go into the Holy of Holies. The Gemara says in Masechet Yoma, he's at that moment, he's in the Holy of Holies. He's alive. He sees the God's divine presence. He's going to say, that guy once did me a favor. He gave me a gift. Let me pray for him. The Gemara says no. That's not the way it works. You can't pray for anyone in there. You got to pray for everyone in there. That's why a Kohen, a Kohen Gadol, is never allowed to take a gift from anyone. Kohen Gadol. A regular Kohen, he has to take gifts. If I come to you and I tell you take the gifts of the Kohen, you have to take it. I come to take the truma. You gotta take it. You must take it. There's 24 gifts of a coin, by the way. 24 gifts. That you know why the, the Torah did that? So the Kohanim have a special gift from God. When they learn Torah, it stays in their head. Special gift. If they apply themselves to Torah, it stays. That's their gift from God. So God said they shouldn't worry about Parnasa. All day, all night, learn Torah. We're gonna help you. We're gonna give you Parnasa. Unfortunately, after so many generations, but if you open up the Shulchan Aruch, by Yosef Karo, most of the commentaries are who? Kohanim and Levim. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Back to what you were saying. When a person does a rare mitzvah, especially in the month of Elul, it's very potent. Very potent. Anytime a person does a mitzvah that's hard for him to keep, that's hard for him to keep, at that moment is an et ratzon. 
It's a moment of divine will in Shamayim. I want to read you a Rav Nachman in the breastlift. This is my favorite Torah in the whole Likute Moran. I've read this Torah a lot of times. It's Torah Vav in Likute Moran. He says here, a person, I'm translating it to you. A person must strive in the month of Elul to give honor to God. Why must he give honor to God? The Torah says, honor your parents. Fear your parents. It doesn't say love your parents. Funny. It says honor them. Fear them. It doesn't say love them. You know why? Sometimes you just can't love them. It's what? It's For some people, I never forget. Rabbi Gabriel Chai. I was in a class in Toro College. Okay. Huh? What professor? She was Indian. I forget her name. I think Patel. They're all Patels. <laughs> so uh, I was in a class, chemistry 101. <laughs> And uh, so she, she used to not teach. She wouldn't teach. She would just baltai the whole class. So she, one day she just asked out of her... Asked, I'm answering your question. Natural, you said, right? She asked, Every person loves her parents. One black African-American woman who was sitting in the corner. Bli shumbusha. I remember it to this day. I remember where I was sitting, which class, and which place. That's how much of an impression it left on me. If I'm sitting over here, she would be sitting right there on the corner, by the corner of the room. She said, I wouldn't take a bullet from, this is her words, I wouldn't take a bullet from my mother. Tell me right now that loving your parents is natural. It's not natural. You're Jewish. You have spiritual DNA. So it's in, inside of you to love every human being. Even at the cost of oneself. Goyim don't have that. Jews have that. Where Baishanim, Rachmanim, and Gomle Chasadim. Goyim don't have that. And we see that also, David Melech by fake converts. They don't have these three attributes. So it's not natural. But the funny thing is, the Torah says to fear God, to love God. It doesn't say anywhere to respect God. What's the difference? When Yaakov Avinu came out of his mother's womb, Esav told Yaakov, if you're not going to let me come out first, I'm going to kill our mother. So Yaakov let Esav come out first, and Yaakov was holding on the heel of Esav. That's why he was called Yaakov. God called him Yaakov. Got a rush. The Ari Hakadosh. Every you know, there's a reason why Sfaradim get a certain uh, awe when they say Ari because the Ari is Etz Hayim. Sfaradim are Etz Hayim. The Midrash Talpiot will be Eliyahu Itamari, who wrote Baal Shevet Musar. He writes, it's a Kabbalah, Ish Mipi Ish, that Sfaradim are from Shevet Yehuda and Ashkenazim are from Shevet Binyamin. Of Eliyahu Aitamari, Baal Shevet Musar, he lived in Izmir, Turkey. He writes Sfaradim and Yehuda is Etz Chaim, Ariya Kadosh. That's why. When the Ariya Kadosh came out with the Kabbalah, he explained the Zohar. Who said the Halakha follows the Zohar versus the, any other Posek? 
the Sfaradim. We changed our Slichot. We changed our Tefillah. We changed our Halachot to follow who? The Ari. Ashkenazim, you have Nusach Ashkenaz, Nusach uh, Sfarad. Don't get confused, it's not Sfaradi. You have Nusach uh, Germania. You have, mm, they have so many Minagim. You'd go crazy how much Minagim they have. Sfaradim have one Minag. Ari Kadosh, that's it. Bam. Zora Kadosh, Ari, Etzachayim. This is our heritage. And that's one of the biggest proofs that the Bukharian people, we, we're Bukharians, that we come from Shevet Yehuda. Even though the Bukharians, before the year 1600, when Rabbi Yosef Maman, Ma'aravi Mugrabi, Ben Rabbi Moshe, who saved the Bukharian Jews from Kelaya, Shalom, he came to Bukhara and he found the Bukharian Jews they were taking showers on Shabbat. They put the fire on Shabbat. He found them cooking on Shabbat. They didn't know what taref was in Bukhara. They didn't have one Gemara. They told him we're Bnei Israeli. They told him we're Israelites. If you open up Britannica, it says over there in Bukhara, Samarkand, lived a tribe called Niftalites. Naftali. Shevi Naftali. So they told him, we're Israeli, we're not uh, Yehudim. We're Israelites. So he told them back, no. You guys are from Shevet Yehuda. And they accepted what he said. Look at all the ten tribes in the world. Ethiopians. Nothing. X. Ephes. Bukharians are the only people... Us and the Kurdim are the only people that accepted on us the Ariya Kadosh. Do you know what kind of Masoret we have? Kurdim are from the Kurdistan. mountains of Kurdistan. Yeah. Kurdistan. Yeah. They're the only two people that weren't in any connection. And when they said, do Purim, keep Purim, Bukhari said, we keep Purim. We already kept Purim. Yemenites didn't keep Purim. Yemenites didn't keep uh, Hanukkah. Yeah. You know why? Because they left Eretz Israel before. before the first Galut. Oh, wow. Ethiopians, when they came to Ethiopia, Operation Magic Carpet. They didn't even know what Hanukkah was. Bukharians knew or didn't know. So they say Bukharians are from the Ten Tribes and that. Okay, there are some, you know, I'm not here uh, Balrocha HaKodesh. I can tell you one thing. When mm -hmm. Rabbi Yosef Maman HaMa'aravi Mugrabi, when he opened up the Zohar HaKadosh, the Bukharians were lit on fire. Till today, we don't start Mincha without Patach Eliyahu mm -hmm. We don't start a Yushua without Hamaskilim Yazir Kazar Akiyah. It only means one thing, Zara Kodesh. Zera Kodesh. That's why I said this Shabbat. Whoever wasn't here on Shabbat, Kodesh Elul, you should know one thing. You have to connect to your, to your own personal church. church. Why? Who's gonna give you Sanegor? Who's gonna be your defendant in Shemaim Kodesh Elul? Not the Irakim, not the Irakim, the Bavlim, the Surim, those right. They're not gonna. They're worrying about their own edut. You know who's gonna come to your defense? Our own Bukharian rabbis. They're going to come. You know who's Rav Yosef Maman Amarabi Mugrabi? He was a descendant of the Rambam. He was a descendant of the Rambam. And then he came to Bukhara. You know what he said? He came to collect money. He heard there was rich Bukharians. <laughs> came to collect money. Kesev is Ahav. He saw he didn't know Torah. You know what he said? He didn't say, I'm going to take the money. Charity.com. I'm going to bounce. <laughs> he came and he stayed. He made Kwanim, Kwanim. We're all religious today because of him, you should know that. We know what Kasher is because of him. We know what Gemara is because of him. It's a mitzvah to remember him, to be maskiroto, and to talk about him. I have many stories about him. But Od Chazon Lamoed, we'll talk about him. Od Chazon Lamoed, it's not a time for 
you know, well, we'll talk about it one day. Just want to let you guys one know one thing. We Bukharians are Zera Kodesh. We are all Zera Kodesh. And I'll tell you, only, there's only one proof for that. Only one proof. When we heard the Zara Kadosh, we were on fire. And we know one thing. The Etz Chaim, you open up the Etz Chaim, those red books over there. Etz Chaim says over there. The sin of Adam Arishon was what? That he wanted to deal with the Pshat. He didn't want to deal with the Torah Tassot. That was his sin. That's called Etz Chaim versus Etz Adad. We all are Zera Kodesh over here. And we all have to connect to our Zera Kodesh. But... I don't want to digress. We've already, we've already gotten too many tangents. But that's Torah. Torah is molid, molid. Open up a Gemara. In Gemara Masechet Shabbat, talks about Halachot Chanukah over there. How do you get Chanukah in Masechet Shabbat? Oh, it talks about candles. Chanukah is candles. Talk about candles. Torah is alive. It gives birth. You go to a math class. He's going to talk about history to you right now. No, we'll talk math. You go to English class. Talk English. You go into everything science, science. Torah, you talk Torah, you talk about everything. Torah is alive, it gives birth. I want to tell you, Rabbi Nachman Breslov over here. This, when I was single, when I was single, when I was reading this, Rabbi Nachman Breslov, it gave me a lot of chizuk. A lot. Out of the astrology of the Jewish people, only two signs are an actual human. The month of Te'umim, to Umim first, that's Sivan, the Gemini. That's the month of Torah. Torah. There is Etzahayim and Etzadat. There is Kabbalah. Then there is Gemara Mishnah Chumash. Two sides of the Torah. That's the Gemini. There's only one other month that has a human in it. Elul. Because when Yaakov Avinu was coming out of his mother's womb, he held on your, your, uh, Esav's ankle. That ankle that he was holding up to the month of Elul. He took the month of Elul inside. This month of Elul was the 40 days Moshe Rabbeinu went up the third time. He got forgiven completely. The Jews got forgiven completely. Now last Thursday, I taught you, last Monday, I taught you guys Yehudim. Small Yehud Hanoten Bayam Derech Hadu Tap in a small way into the mother. And I said, you guys have tefillah on the chat to read that tefillah every single day from the Benish Chai. If you can't do the Yechud, read the tefillah. Now I'm going to teach you something. This is the, uh, the, next step. the next step. If you can't even do that, how do I tap into the month of Elul? This Hanoten Be'am Derech, this taking this, this, this Koach, the Koach of Silicon, you know, I, I will never forget. Maybe four years ago this was, I went to a Silicon midnight. Midnight it was. So we were singing, I, that, I don't like sitting in the front. But there was only one seat available in the front. Two young boys were reading Silicon over there. And I started singing with them. You know, one Israeli guy gets up. He looks at those two boys who were Chazanim. He says, could you guys sit down let this guy uh, read instead of you? The boys got so embarrassed. He says, the guy says, what do you think? Slikho is an opera? Hmm. We're here just to sing? Az Ashir, Az Yashir Moshe. The Gemara says, when we sing songs from the Torah, the Shekhinah cries. They made me into a song. The point of slichot is not to make you, not to make a song out of it. I'll tell you a secret. There's a pasuk in the Navi. When Elisha Hanavi, the student of Eliyahu Hanavi, couldn't have prophecy, he said, Ve'yehi ken again hamen again. What would he do? He would play music. Music is a gateway to prophecy. That's why the Rambam says that Aristotle, Yemach Shem was one step away from prophecy because the Greeks said that the planets move together like the harmonious way a music is made. He said he was one step away from prophecy, but one thing was missing, he didn't believe in God. 
<laughs> who started the whole button? Who pressed the button? You know, we have a thing in science. This is the biggest proof that Torah, uh, Hashem, uh, there's only one God. You have something called a sodium uh, potassium, uh, sodium, uh, sodium chloride uh, pump. Yeah, chloride or potassium? Potas sodium potassium pump. So the thing in, in science goes like this. Sodium starts the potassium and potassium starts the sodium. So I once asked my professor in anatomy physiology, so who was the one who, who started the, the first one? Because if sodium starts the potassium and potassium started the sodium, and your whole brain works on the sodium potassium pump. So who started the whole thing? I don't know. Who do you think started it? Melech Malchayam Lachim Akadosh Baruch Hu. But I want to give you guys one sigula, a couple of sigulot. Bear with me five more minutes. Five more minutes. I'm gonna teach you guys stuff you could use for Chodesh Shadul that you guys never heard before in your life. Number one. How come the Torah doesn't say to honor God? How come? It says love him, fear him, does it love, respect him? Of Nachum Breslov says in the Gutemaran Torah above. If Charlie Scott le Kavod, you cannot begin to honor God. Ela alide teshuva. First, you have to start to do teshuva. The ikara teshuva. What's teshuva, guys? What's called teshuva? Listen carefully. Kishe yishma biziono. When somebody degrades you, yidom, you will close your mouth. Ve yishtok, and you won't answer back. That's teshuva. Kilet kavod belo kaf. You can't write the word kavod in Hebrew. Chaf, bet, vav, dal, but a chaf. The first letter is chaf. And that chaf is the first letter of keter, crown. Bechinat ekye. The letter chaf, which is keter, which is kavod, is, is, is uh, ekye. The name of God, which is ekye. The ekye, u bechinat teshuva. And that is teshuva. So Rav Nachman Breslov says, if you want to be honor God, I didn't even get to the idea of Anil Lodivili because you know, you just start and the Torah comes out. First thing, when somebody tells you something, degrades you, and you don't answer back, that's Teshuvah. Now you know you reached Teshuvah. Funny, we just talked about this. But I'm going to tell you a secret. It's not talking about people outside your house. It's talking about people inside your house. Ikara teshuva is with your wife, your kids, your cousins, your parents, and your family members. Boss is uh, outside. That's, uh, you know, kosh again. When a per what is real teshuva, guys? When you, Rav Nachman Breslov says, Torah Vav. I'm telling you guys a secret. Elul, the whole month of Elul, is the Yichud Hayoten Bayam Derek, one who makes a path in the sea. And the Gemara says, Masakat Sota, two things are hard to get, like opening a path in the sea. Your wife in Parnasa. And Rav Rachman Abrasa says, How do you reach that? By hearing your Bizayon and the Yishto. Mm -hmm. That's number one. So when a person hears his Bizayonot, and he's Shotek, he hears people degrading him. And he's silent, he's opening a path in the sea. And if he's married and has kids and needs Parnassah, he's gonna get Parnassah because of that. And if you have a person who doesn't have a wife, he will have a wife because of that. This is the secret of Hanoten Beyam there. this is Chodesh Elul. Number one, that's the first thing. Second thing, I'm gonna teach you guys something Unbelievable right now from the works of Priya Tzachem Daria Kadosh. And the are going to fly right now. If a person in the month of Elul is going to learn, not only in the month of Elul, in general, the Priya Tzachem says, if he's going to learn Mishnayot, Masechet Brachot, Masechet Brachot, Mishnayot, Hu Tikun Lakeri. Any time Chasu Shalom he did a carry, yet carry, when just by learning the Mishnah to Tikkun. Masechet Barachot. Ulemi shene'ena be'olam azeh b'lo bracha. You ate without saying a bracha? 
learning Mishnayot Masechet Brachot is a tikkun for that. And if God forbid Gozelet Ha'aniim you stole from poor people, learning Masechet Brachot is a tikkun for that. Not only that, if a poor person came to you, asked for tzedakah, you didn't give him? Learning, just learning Masechet Brachot is a tikkun for that. Secrets of secrets. Next, if a person was Michalel Shabbat, he was Michalel Yom Tov, he didn't keep the halachot of the holidays, just learning the Mishnayot of Shabbat, Pesachim, Beitza, Sukkot, Ta'anit, he's doing a tikkun for Chilul Shabbat. No fasting. Nothing. Just by learning these Mishnah, you're making a tikkun. Next. God forbid a person made a pigam in Arayot. I don't like saying the word. I don't like translating that. You have to keep your mouth clean. You guys know what that is. The promiscuous sin. If a person made vows and he didn't keep them. If he learns Mishnayot. Seder Nashim, which is Masechet Kiddushin, Nedarim, Gitin, Yebamot. He's doing a tikkun. For those are out. You don't have to learn all the Mishnah, even if you do one a day, by right? No, that's the secret of Chokli Israel. Every day is one of these Mishnayot. That's why I tell anybody who asks me for something, you should know one thing. People will attest to this. They say, I need Yeshua, I do Chokli Israel every day. You do Chokli Israel, you're going to see Yeshua. A person who stole from his friend, he killed by mistake or by purpose. He made fun of his friends. The tikkun is to learn Mishnayot Nezikim. Baba Kama, Baba Batra, Baba Metzia, Masechet Sanhedrin, Makot. Guys, I'm telling you, nobody's going to tell you this in your lifetime. A person just wants to have light shining from his soul. He wants to be charismatic. Learn Kodshim. Zvachim. Anything to do with Korbanot. It's hard to learn. Those are the hardest ones because they're not so applicable. A person who wants to be mitaken his Yisod. He was with Anida by mistake. Learn Mishnayot, Masechet, Nida. I just gave you six keys in Elul to fix your Nishama. You're going to get to Elul to Rosh Hashanah. You're going to be Bakol, Mikol, Kol. Iowa. Who could hear this and not be excited? The keeper. Abotai. There's much more to say about Elul. Unfortunately, we've got to start with Chaim Shul. Unfortunately and unfortunately, we've got to start with Chaim Shul. I want to give you a couple, couple of more sigulot. Can I? If I already started, may I? Number one. Month of Elul, say chapter Tehillim 27. Not at night. During the day. Number 27. Every time, now what's the secret? Just to read it, it's like 10%. You want to reach 50, 60, 70%? In chapter 27, there's 13 names. It says 13 times is the name of God. Every time you say Hashem, think. First one, Kel. Second one, Rachum. Chanun. Erech Apayim. Rav Chesed. 13 attributes. It's like you did Selechot. Third Sigula. Try not to miss Birkat Kohanim in the month of Elul. You're asking me to give you a minyan schedule? I don't know why you said that right now. Huh? I just, I just give, you, give you suggestions. Number, not to miss Birkat Kohanim. Every day I said. Try to make Birkat Kohanim. Number three. I'm going to give you a sigula right now. Do hatarat nidarim. 
Nullifications of vows. Many people have curses on them. Ayin hara. Nullifications of vows cancels all that out. I've heard people who've done this seen miracles. Married women could make their husbands shaliyah. Number four. Guys, this is the last sigula I'm going to give for the month of Elul. Take upon yourself to take a book of Musa or Chot Sadikim, Maspik Lov De Hashem, Misilat Yesharim, Shari Tshuva, one book, one chapter, one page, this whole month of Elul. Try to finish it. Perkei Avot is even Sifrei Musa. It's, it's Musa and Torah. How do you like that? Guys, the answers are in your hands. All you have to do is use the key. We are in Ishamot Kedoshot. You know, I personally, this is already many years, I finished Tikkun Ezor the whole month of Elul. You know why I do it? I could be learning <coughs> Gemara, this, that, Halachot. You know why I do it? Because Ani le dodi ve dodi li. The king is in the field. I am to my, I am to my king as my king is, I am to my beloved. The king, you know why the king is in the field? Sometimes we feel like we can't go to the palace. We're regular working people. We need protectia. We need the connections to get into the palace. The king says, no, Jonah, I'm, I'm in the field. I'm here for you. Just come, talk to me. Don't worry, I'll give you. Give you time. Just tap into it. Tap into the energy. Tap into your nishama. I was reading Likoti uh, Amim Tanya. It says over there, when you learn Torah, you are one with the Insof Baruch Hu. One. You're one with the infinite. Everyone over here, sitting over here right now, is one with the infinite. How do you hear the Nagi Goosebumps? I don't know. I can say it every single time, Nagi Goosebumps. I don't know how. You're one with... You, have to, you feel... You know it's there. May Hashem be mezakeh with us. To feel Avodat Hashem. Amen. To feel the Kiddushah. May we all be written in the Sefer Chaim Tovim. Parnasat Tova. Zivugim Agonim. Osher Ve Osher. Vechen Yeratzon Ve Nomar. Amen. Amen.